The Valiant Little Tailor Long ago, in a picturesque town, there lived a tailor in his small workshop under the roof. He didn't have much, but he was diligent and always ready to take on new challenges. And in every challenge, he saw the opportunity for something great. One sunny summer morning, he sat at his table by the window in high spirits. His work made him happy, but he knew he could achieve more. He loved working with the finest fabrics and designing beautiful dresses for his clients, be they noblemen or the farmer's wife. As he happily immersed himself in his work, he heard a farmer woman offering her goods from outside. He wanted to seize this opportunity, so he called the woman over to him. The farmer woman sensed a good deal and hurried over. However, he only bought two small spoonfuls of jam from her and rejoiced in the opportunity taken. Every trade has the chance to change your life, his old father once told him. The farmer woman was grumpy. After he paid the farmer woman and his stomach growled, he took a slice of bread and spread the jam on it. However, he still wanted to finish the jacket he was working on, so he placed his meal on the table for now. The jam smelled delicious, and soon the whole room was filled with its sweet scent. It wasn't just the tailor who enjoyed the smell. A group of flies quickly gathered on the wall, now aiming for the jam. In swarms, the flies eventually pounced on the tailor's meal. Hey! Who invited you? The little tailor spoke and chased away the uninvited guests. But the flies were not deterred and returned in even greater numbers. The little tailor realized it was time to take action if he wanted to eat his bread. I'll get you, he shouted at them and mercilessly swatted the swarm of flies with the cloth. When the dust settled, he counted no less than seven dead flies lying before him. Unbelievable! Did I catch all seven? He exclaimed and admired his own achievement. The whole town should know about this. No, the whole world! He continued, grabbing a belt and skillfully embroidering seven at one blow on it with his nimble fingers. As a reward for this great deed, he took a bite of his bread after every few stitches filled with joy. The tailor fastened the belt around his waist and wanted to venture out into the world because he believed his workshop was too small for his bravery. He packed his belongings and was about to set off when he looked around to see what else he could take. In a cupboard he spotted an old cheese which he eventually packed into his bag. With joyful steps he left his house and noticed a bird trapped in the bushes in front of his home. Carefully, he freed the little bird from its predicament and placed it in his pocket before marching onward. The path led him up a mountain, and when he reached the highest peak, he saw a giant sitting on a hill. The little tailor, brimming with self-confidence, fearlessly addressed the giant, saying, Good day, my friend. You sit here and gaze out into the world. I am on my way into the world to prove my courage. Would you like to come along? However, the giant was unimpressed by the tailor's grunt words. You little worm, what daring do you have? Proudly the tailor showed the giant his belt, on which it said, seven at one blow, which actually impressed the giant because he assumed it referred to seven people. But the giant wanted to test the tailor before truly trusting him. So the giant picked up one of the stones lying by the wayside and squeezed it, causing water to drip out. Do the same if you are as strong as you claim to be. The tailor was unimpressed and said, If that's all, it's child's play for me. Then he reached into his pocket and took out the piece of cheese. He squeezed it tightly, 
causing the juice to flow from the cheese. That was even better, isn't it? replied the little tailor. The giant didn't know what to say. It seemed that there was more to this little man than one would assume at first glance. Then he picked up another stone from the wayside and threw it so high that it couldn't be seen anymore. It took a few moments until the stone finally fell back down from the sky. Now you might do the same. Well thrown, said the trailer. But the stone eventually fell back to the ground. I'll throw you one that won't come back. He boldly reached into his pocket and took the bird in his hand. With a swift motion, he threw the bird into the air and it flew high until it couldn't be seen anymore. They waited for a moment, but with his trick, no stone fell from the sky. You can throw indeed, said the giant, now truly impressed by the little tailor. However, he still wanted to subject him to one final test, so he said, But now, let's see if you're able to carry something heavy. He led the tailor to a fallen oak tree and said, If you're strong enough, help me carry the tree out of the forest. Fine, you will take the trunk on your shoulder and I'll take the branches and twigs. They're the heaviest part of the tree anyway. The giant lifted the trunk onto his shoulder, inadvertently carrying the tailor along with it. As the lumbering giant couldn't turn or look around, he didn't realize he was carrying the entire weight. The tailor was in high spirits again and sang a cheerful song about three tailors riding through the countryside. The giant, on the other hand, was impressed that this little man could keep up with his fast pace. After a while, however, the giant grew tired from the heavy load. Then he said, I can't go on anymore. My arm is getting too heavy. I have to drop the tree. The little tailor jumped down from the tree trunk and the giant let the tree trunk sink to the ground. There, he took the tree in his arms as if he had carried it the long way and said, You're such a big guy, and you can't carry the tree? The giant was puzzled and annoyed. How could this puny fellow have such strength? As they passed a cherry tree, the giant pulled down the tree's crown and plucked the ripest cherries that grew at the very top. Then the giant instructed the tailor to help himself as well. But as the tailor grabbed onto one of the branches, the giant let go of the tree's crown and flung the trailer into the air. However, skillfully as he was, the tailor landed back on his feet. The giant laughed loudly and said, What's the matter with you? Can't you hold on to this little tree? No, it's not a lack of strength, replied the tailor. I have killed seven at one blow. Don't forget that. I jumped over the tree because the hunters down there were shooting into the bushes. Jump after me if you can, then we'll see who can jump higher. And once again the tailor grinned triumphantly at the giant. The giant attempted to jump but couldn't clear the tree and had ended up in the branches, giving the upper hand back to the tailor. All right then, said the giant, if you're such a brave guy, Spend the night in our cave with the other giants. The tailor nodded and was ready, so the two of them continued on. The cave was enormous and a group of giants sat around the fire. Each of them roasted the sheep and ate from it. The little tailor thought to himself that this cave was truly much larger than his workshop, but he was certain that fate had something even better in store for him. The giant showed him an empty bed and told him to lie down and get some rest. However, the gigantic bed was far too big for the tailor. He settled himself in a corner at the edge of the cave and fell asleep. At midnight, the giant approached the bed he had assigned to his guest and struck it with the large iron rod. He intended to crush the little tailor, as he had deceived and mocked him. Self-satisfied, 
Thinking that the ordeal with the little man would finally be over, the giant climbed back into his own bed. The next day, the giants went into the forest together, completely forgetting about the tailor. Meanwhile, the tailor had slept well and strolled over in a cheerful manner. He wanted to continue venturing out into the world and tell everyone about his great deeds. When the giants caught sight of the exuberant tailor, they were startled. They feared that he had come to seek revenge and would now slay them all. Screaming, they ran out into the forest. The tailor noticed the commotion and was completely surprised by the giant's panic. But he was on a journey and decided, despite all the excitement, to follow his nose and continue on his way. Hour after hour, he marched across green fields and past small forests until he grew tired from all the walking. He chose to take a nap in the courtyard of a palace where he had arrived. As he looked around before drifting off to sleep, he thought to himself that such a palace would be just right for him. After all, he had killed seven at one blow. While he peacefully slept in the grass, some people approached and observed the unfamiliar guest. One of them noticed the embroidery on his belt and read aloud to the others that this man had killed seven at one blow. The crowd was surprised and thrilled. Did they have a real hero in their town? They unanimously agreed that this man was a mighty lord who had slain seven giants at once. They reported the sleeping guest to the king, and he too was delighted. With all the wars, villains and roaming giants, they couldn't let the man go under any circumstances. The king sent his messenger to the sleeping stranger to bring him to him. After a long nap, the tailor stretched and was quite surprised by the commotion around him. The king's messenger then invited him to follow him to the king. They had been waiting for a hero like him here, and the tailor agreed, of course. After all, he had come to prove to the world what he was capable of achieving. They gave him the most beautiful residence in the city, and everyone admired the new hero of the town. However, some of the king's entourage were not happy about that. He had now become the shining hero of the city, so some of the king's most loyal followers joined forces and announced the resignation from their positions. The king was very saddened to lose so many good followers, but he didn't want to offend the new hero either. After all, he had slain seven giants at one blow. What would stop him from killing the entourage and even the king himself and making himself king? Out of his concern, an idea finally came to the king. He offered the tailor half the kingdom and the hand of his beautiful daughter if he managed to slay the murderous and raging giants outside the city gates. One hundred of the king's riders would assist the hero in his fight. The tailor didn't have to think long. A beautiful princess and half the kingdom would suit him well. After all, he had killed seven giants at one blow, and slowly people seemed to genuinely appreciate his accomplishment. The tailor set off with the entourage of riders, and soon they reached the edge of the forest where the giants were supposed to dwell. Confidently, the tailor turned to his entourage and told them to wait there. He would take care of the giants and then call them. The riders were fine with it. A battle with two giants was indeed a dangerous affair. So the tailor ventured into the dark forest, and after a while he discovered two sleeping giants. Without fear or doubt, the tailor filled his pockets with stones and climbed onto a tree situated between the two giants. From above, the tailor took one stone at a time and threw it at the chest of one of the giants. It took several attempts before the giant finally woke up. 
Enraged, the sluggish giant turned to his companion and scolded him. Why are you hitting me? Stop it. You're dreaming, said the other. I'm not hitting you. They lay back down and immediately fell asleep again. And once again, the tailor started pelting the giants with his stones. Once again, the giant complained to his companion. What's the matter with you? The other exclaimed. Why are you throwing stones at me? I've had enough. And again, the other giant insisted. I haven't done anything. Just stop. They argued for a few more moments until both grew tired, fell asleep again and calmed down. And once again, the tailor resumed his game. This time, he threw the stone with all the strength he had directly at the head of the giant. The giant's reaction was immediate. Hey, that's too hard. I told you that's enough. The giant jumped up and rushed towards his sleeping companion, forcefully pushing him into the trees. A fierce battle ensued between the two. They pummeled each other and uprooted large trees to use as weapons against each other. Eventually, in their intense fight, the two giants struck each other so forcefully that they both lay dead on the ground. Confident and proud, the tailor approached the giants and delivered a final blow to each of them with his sword. Then he marched back to his companions and brought them to the battleground. The riders were surprised and thrilled. There lay two giants slain on the ground with the triumphant tailor standing over them. Proudly, the tailor returned to the king with the riders to claim his reward. However, the king was now uncertain about the conditions of his offer. After all, he didn't want to lose his half-kingdom and beloved daughter to this young skinny fellow. So he gave him one more task. There is a unicorn roaming in the forest, causing great damage. Capture it and bring it to me, commanded the king. The tailor smiled and shrugged. If that's all, I'm not afraid of a unicorn. I have slain seven at once. I can handle this without any problems. He grabbed a rope and an axe and marched off with his entourage. Just before the edge of the forest, he instructed his men once again to wait for him there. He didn't have to search long for the unicorn. He spotted it in a clearing. He knew he had to be clever, so he positioned himself in front of a tree and caught the unusual creature's attention. He taunted it with wild gestures, provoking it until it finally charged at him. At the right moment, he jumped to the side, causing the unicorn to impale itself on the tree trunk and become stuck. Quickly, he took his rope and placed it around the creature's neck. He then freed it and marched together with it to his companions. They were astonished that he had managed to capture the creature alone. And even the king was amazed when they arrived at the castle. Once again, the tailor had passed the test. Now, the tailor wanted his reward, but once again, the king replied that he must overcome one final challenge before the wedding. A wild boar was said to be lurking in the forest, causing much damage to the fields. The hunters were supposed to help him catch the beast. However, the tailor raved off the king's request. That would not be a great challenge, and the help of the hunters would not be necessary. The hunters could wait for him at the edge of the forest. Someone who had slain seven at once could surely handle it alone. So the tailor entered the forest once again, and he didn't have to search long for the wild boar. It stood before him with a frothing mouth, showing its sharp tusks. However, the brave tailor dodged the animal and lured it further towards the edge of the path. The wild boar became increasingly agitated by this game. He skillfully evaded the beast time and time again until they reached a chapel 
into which he then jumped. Inside, he climbed up to the chapel window and the boar chased after him. However, it couldn't reach the upper level and was too clumsy to escape the room in time. Quickly, the tailor slammed the door shut from the outside, trapping the wild boar inside the chapel. Calmly and leisurely, he fetched the hunters and presented them with the boar trapped in the chapel. They were astonished, and the king felt no different when they brought him the boar and told him about the latest heroic feat of the young hero. But who could blame him? After all, he had slain seven at once. And now the king had to keep his word, so begrudgingly he handed over half of his kingdom and his daughter's hand to him. If he had known that it was not a war hero, but a simple tailor standing before him, he would have been even more annoyed. After a few weeks, the young queen heard her husband speak in his sleep. Little tailor, make me a coat and patch my pants. I'm in a hurry. This was not the first time, and she realized that her husband was a simple tailor. As a princess, she couldn't be the wife of a mere tailor. So she told her father about her suffering. Her father agreed with her and was full of anger. A tailor had taken half of his kingdom and furthermore, his daughter. This charade had to come to an end. So he said to her, leave your bedroom open next night. My servants will stand outside and when he falls asleep, they shall bind him and take him aboard a ship. Then we'll be rid of him. His daughter was satisfied with the plan, but one of the servants took pity on the little tailor. He had always worked hard and passed all the tests with a clever mind. It's not right what the king demands. So the servant informed the tailor about the king's plan. The little tailor, now a king himself, nodded confidently and said, I will put a stop to this. Thank you for your loyalty. You're a good person. In the evening, the couple went to bed at the usual time as they always did. When his wife believed he had fallen asleep, she got up and opened the door. Then she quietly returned to bed and waited. The tailor now spoke in a loud voice as everyone believed he was speaking in his sleep again. Little tailor, make me a coat and patch my pants. But when I had slain seven at once, killed two giants, led away a unicorn, and captured a wild boar all by myself, I became a fearless king. What do you think I fear then? A few men standing outside my bedroom? The men outside the chamber were frozen with fear, and none dared to approach him. Thus, the little tailor remained a king for the rest of his life. Follow our YouTube channel and don't miss any of our upcoming episodes. See you soon in the Graphic Kingdom.